I'm talking about deception in the hour. And one of the things I showed you last year, I think it was earlier in the, early in the year, I showed you something uh, with the, the Catholic Church, the Pope, organizing the Council for Inclusive Capitalism. And I showed that to you. Council for Inclusive Capitalism. Where the Catholic Church is banding together with these various organizations, especially, we saw, pharmaceutical industry getting together with them in this inclusive, this council for inclusive capitalism. I showed it to you. I want you to look at it again. You can see the Council for Inclusive Capitalism releases framework to guide companies in delivering a just energy transition. And I gave you a lot of information on this. Which means, and, and it's been on the news also several times, the meetings that the, the Pope had with the uh, pharmaceutical, the, well, they call them big pharma, with the, with the heads of, the, of big pharma. <laughs> but I showed you something in the Word of God. In Revelation chapter 18, from verse, now all of that chapter 18, you're going to see the destruction of Rome. The Bible talks about it. In fact, it begins with chapter 17. It begins with chapter 17. It is introduced in chapter 17, the Antichrist and... Uh, those that are together with him will destroy religious Rome. They will destroy the Catholic Church. The Bible shows they will. And at that point, because you see, the Catholic Church will help the Antichrist come into office because the Pope, whether it is the current one or whether a new one will take his place. I mean, remember, Pope Benedict suddenly resigned overnight and was replaced by this one. So what's going to happen with this one? Well, I'm not sure yet. If, if I get to know, I can tell you. But right now, just follow what I'm saying. I use the office. So, what happens is, the Pope helps the Antichrist to come in, into office. Because they expect to keep their place. Remember, why the Jewish leaders supported the Roman power against Jesus? Because they wanted to keep their place. So here again, we're going to find these leaders trying to keep their place so that they will be in charge of the religious government. The religious part of it, because there'll be the, the, the one world economy, one world government, one world religion. So they want to be in charge of the religious part. And I showed you yesterday, several popes through the century have been calling for a global authority of some kind. So they've been in support of one world government. They're calling for it. They want it. 
So, we come to a place where they help to bring it in. But the Bible says, in no distant future, in no distant time from after they help to bring it in, the Antichrist will destroy it. The Antichrist, along with his European allies, will destroy that one world religion by Rome. And by the way, already, as of now, the Pope is the head of the current one world uh, religion because there is one, there, there, there's one already, an ecumenical movement that is going on currently. But Pope Francis didn't start it. John Paul made it popular, and it's been on. So there's already, um, they've got it in the works. And there are many, many church organizations that are part of it, sadly, in spite of what they've heard, that it's, it's one world religion. I'm not talking about one Christian body. No, one world religion. It's in, it includes all the other religious groups. They're all inside. So they expect to take this forward and they will help bring in the Antichrist. They're not the only ones going to bring in the Antichrist. There are several groups, but they are the religious ones. And so they bring in the Antichrist, but the Antichrist and his European allies will destroy it. They will destroy religious Rome. They will destroy it. And then the Antichrist will take over and become the head of the one world religion. And not just the head, he will also declare himself to be God. I'll read you a few scriptures, and I, I, I read these things to you before. We've dealt with them before. I'm, I'm just going through some things because I want to tell you. So here's what the Bible says. And I did share this with you about a year ago. In, in this destruction of religious Rome, the Spirit said so much. And the angel of God gave these prophetic words. And I want you to go to chapter 18. And uh, when, you read, when you read it, it's, it's really tough. This is strong language, strong language. But then it gets to verse 23, which is the area I want to go. And the light of a candle shall shine no more at all in thee. And the voice of the bridegroom and of the bride shall be heard no more at all in thee. For thy merchants, thy merchants, thy tradesmen. You see that? But I just showed you. I just showed you. The Council for Inclusive Capitalism. That includes all of the big guys of business in the business world. They've organized. And that's what the Bible says. For is addressing religious Rome in this place. In chapter 18, so it says, For thy merchants were the great men of the earth. Then look at this, it's very striking. For by thy sorceries were all nations deceived. Now, the word sorceries, incidentally, is not the same Greek word we've been reading with the word sorcery. This is a different word. This word is pharmakeia in the Greek. It means pharmacy. Interesting. What is pharmacy? The art and science of preparing and dispensing drugs and medicines. That is pharmacy. That's the pharmaceutical industry. It says true pharmacy. It says, go back to it. Look at it. For by thy surgeries, pharmacia, were all nations deceived. Look at it. We're talking about this is the this is the um, the destruction of religious Rome and how they came together with all of these groups. He says, "Thy merchants were the great men of the earth." We've seen that coming together. We've seen that coming together. 
And it says, through pharmacy, all nations were deceived. We've seen that happening. And let me tell you, the deception is not over. We've only destroyed the ability to control the world while we're still here. After we're gone, they're still going to do more. And the deception will continue through pharmacare. Make no mistakes about it. The only reason they are unable to prosecute their plans at this time, the only reason they are able to com- they're unable to complete their plans is because of the name, the all-powerful name of Jesus Christ. And the authority in it that we are wielding against all the forces of darkness. But once we are gone, they will come up with new lies. Let me show you so you can understand. Daniel chapter 8. We're going to read from verse 23. So when I was telling you about this thing, I said, look, 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 don't accept these lies. And pharmacia, big pharma, that's pharmacia. It says the great men of the earth. Right? They were the merchants for religious Rome. Interesting. And you can imagine what the what the writing there, what I just showed you. They, they, they're formulating plans to control businesses. So they're the biggest. So now they want to decide how businesses run throughout the world. Daniel chapter 8, I'm reading from verse 23. Let's read from the NIV. In the latter part of their reign, when rebels have become completely wicked, a fierce-looking king, a master of intrigue, will arise. I told you they're waiting for a leader. They want a leader. They're going to get one. They're going to get one. And this is what they're going to get. A fierce-looking king, a master of intrigue, will arise. He will become very strong, but not by his own power. Not by his own power. Why? The dragon gave him his power. That's the devil. We read that to you yesterday. Revelation chapter 13, verse 2. He will cause astounding devastation and will succeed. Listen, astounding devastation. So much destruction from this man. And yet, people will love him for it. They say, go ahead. Yeah. Look at it. It says, and will succeed in whatever he does. He will destroy those who are mighty. The holy people. He will destroy the holy people. I'm going to tell you something about this in in a second. Next verse. He will cause deceit to prosper. Did you hear that? Oh, If you think there's deception right now, you ain't seen nothing yet. Look at what he's saying. He will cause deceit to prosper. And he will consider himself superior. When they feel secure, he will destroy many and take his stand against the prince of princes. That's Jesus Christ. He will take a stand against Jesus. Yet he will be destroyed, but not by human power. That's the power of God that will destroy him. Think about this. He will cause deceit to prosper. So you can understand when the Bible tells us that these pseudo prophets are speaking by these evil spirits of deception. The Antichrist spirit is a spirit of deception. And if you understand that the things that have been happening are under the power of this evil spirit, then you'll understand why there had been so much deception. Listen, it says the whole, it says all nations were deceived through pharmacia, big pharma. They deceived the whole world. Look at the current deception with the vaccines. 
They lied to you about the mask. They lied to you about the vaccines. They told you if you took the vaccine, life will return to normal. It never did. I told you it never would. I told you. I said, they're lying to you. That's not going to happen. Once you get into the vaccine mode, you're going to keep getting vaccinated. I told you. They're not going to stop. And look at it. Version 1 vaccine. Version 2 vaccine. Then, between different vaccines, boosters. So you get booster, 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 booster. Then, until the ultimate vaccine comes. And the ultimate one will be 666. Six, six. Remember. But for God's people, you won't need to remember it. Because you won't be here. You won't be here. Manto Korabakasiti. All right. So let's go to Daniel chapter 11. I'm going to read two verses. Verse 32 to begin with. Chapter 11, verse 32. And such as do wickedly against the covenant shall he corrupt by flatteries. He will corrupt them by what? Flatteries. Use that NIV one more time. The NIV. With flattery, he will corrupt those who have violated the covenant. Flattery. He will use flatteries. We've seen deception. Flatteries. Go to verse 36. The king will do as he pleases. He will exalt and magnify himself above every god and will say on a herd of things against the god of gods. He will be successful until the time of wrath is completed. Hiya. Uh, uh, let me use the King James language for some consistency of something I want you to observe. And the king shall do according to his will, and he shall exalt himself and magnify himself above every god, and shall speak marvelous things against the god of gods, and shall prosper, watch this, and shall prosper till the indignation be accomplished. For that that is determined shall be done, till the indignation be accomplished. So whose indignation? God's indignation. It started out from year one of the seven-year period. It just gets worse. Year after year. Gets worse. Year after year. It calls it the indignation. Remember? Remember coming to thy closet? Into thy chambers? All right? Hide thyself for a little while until the indignation be overpassed. Remember that. Look at, and shall speak marvelous things, evil things against God, and shall prosper till the indignation be accomplished. So that is a period of judgment, I told you. It's a period of judgment. I gotta show you something that's very important. See, um, touching things. You know, yesterday when I was showing you the pictures of those sculptures that they set up in October. In New York. Can we have those pictures again? The terrible looking animal. They set it up at the Rockefeller Center. Along with an 11 foot dragon, and what was the symbolism? What was the symbolism? Rockefeller Foundation is saying, We have empowered you, so they are. Representing the dragon. So they send the beast to the United Nations. 
the dragon gave the beast his power. What are we, what are we seeing? We're seeing that there are voices, loud voices in the United Nations that are speaking for the Rockefeller Foundation, period. The question is, who are those speaking in the Rockefeller Foundation? And who are they speaking for? I have no problems with anybody. My question, why did they have it there? I didn't send them. I'm, I'm showing you what's in the Bible. These are symbolisms. Exactly what the Bible says. So they come together, they got the, they, they got the dragon, and they got the beast. The beast as described in the scripture. The dragon has described then in that place. And then they send that one to the United Nations. And where's the United Nations? He said, I saw a beast rise from the sea. Sea in the Bible represents people. Masses of people. What does the United Nations represent? Nations of men. Have you heard that term, the sea of humanity? So that's exactly, it was an announcement that was made in October. And October is significant because there are several things that are planned for October 2025 and October 2029. And October 2030. There are plans for October. So you, you, what you saw there in, um, in New York City was a spiritual inauguration. So you might call it countdown to the end. And to think that these things are not there is to deceive oneself. How, 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 could we, how could we organize these things? When I started telling you all this had to do with the end times from 2000, did I plan to give them, did I plan to give them the beast and, and the dragon? How could I have organized all that? And when I talked about the, 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 the organizations that were responsible for those things, did I tell Rockefeller to go and have these things <laughs> I didn't organize them. 